done something. Well, I'm drinking that whiskey out of that glass. And if that ain't country, well, boys, you can kiss my ass. If I'm upset, I can put on a country record and get it out of me instead of putting a gun to my head and taking the easy way out. You know, it's that music is there to help people survive. Thanksgiving be those hot times. That cash is gonna sing it low. And I'm here getting wasted with all my country heroes. The way I've always looked at it, my granddad sang about the light and I'm always sang about the dark. I'm getting wasted just like my country heroes. This is the last badass right here. This was Johnny Cash's guitar. And he gave it to my dad, and then my dad gave it to me. But the belt buckle scratches on the back has some Johnny Cash. What I was trying to rebel against is you, you always love what you can't have. Okay, well, I was raised going to church. I had to go to a few Christian schools. So what's going to appeal to me? Naturally, hail Satan and fucking heavy metal. Okay, that's a good way to start. Um, and my mom was a very, as I would say, she was like a neo-Nazi Christian lady. And they were always scared to death um, of where I was headed because I used to love Sid Vicious. I used to cut myself up and put safety pins through my skin and through my nose and you know, just trying to rebel. Every rock band I've been in these shoes have been with me. If you notice, my, my boots, I always have duct tape on my country boots, and they've done, they've been with me since 1994. And these, sh these shoes have been in Superjoint Ritual, Buzzkill, Bedwetter, Rift, Salida, um, Assjack, and Arson Anthem, and I guess that's about it. But they've been fucking hanging in there, so the duct tape goes fucking deep with me man if it hadn't been for Jason and the Scorchers I wouldn't be doing this right now it put everything in perspective it's like you can be a country boy you can sing country music but you can rock people's dicks in the dirt alright even got his farmer Jason have you seen that which is beautiful because it's truly him I remember moving to Nashville in 81, and I was just dumbfounded when I got to town that no one else was doing what I had in my mind to do. And everyone was sort of like singing these songs about, you know, their ex-wives, and every single record sounded the same, and we hated that stuff, you know. It, it had nothing to do with country music. We loved traditional country music. So we never, ever were rebelling against country music. We were, however, definitely rebelling against this sort of horrible late 70s, early 80s country pop that was happening out of Nashville at the time. We would do an old Jimmy Rogers song, and his version went like this. I love the women and I love them all the same. I love the women and I love them all the same. But we would do it like this. I love the women and I love them all the same. I love the women and I love them all the same. I love the women, but not enough to give them my name. And it was an instant. I mean, in the first verse, I said, this is it. We are on to it. This is what we're going to do. 
we would play Bluegrass Inn in Nashville. Then the next week, we would be in New York playing at the Danceteria to a bunch of new wave people with weird hairdos and, you know, really cool. And that's the kind of thing we were doing at the time, and we could do it. We could do both. So we were basically trying to take traditional American music forms and just giving them a real dose of modern high energy, basically, is what we did. These women make a fool out of me. Jason and the Scorchers were never trying to destroy, you know, what made country music good. We only tried to change it. That's how Jason and the Scorchers did it. I have an identical twin brother named Farmer Jason, uh, and he does music for little kids. I think he might be down at the chicken house right now. Come here, Petunia! Hoo Hoo -wee! Come on, Petunia! I'm gonna sing a song to you! There she is! Hello, Petunia! Hoo -wee! Here we go! It's time for... The Farmer Jason Lunchtime Concert! I'm running down the highway, running down the line. I'm running wide open and I'm really feeling fine. With an amplifier and a crummy old guitar. I'm a rock and roller and I'm gonna be a star. I'm a punk. I'm a punk. I'm a punk. I'm a punk. I'm a punk rock skunk. Woo! All right. Hey, ho, let's go. Hey, ho. Let's go! Okay, the audience now. Are you ready, Petunia? It's your turn. Hey, ho! Uh, hey, ho! Hey, ho! Okay, that's not working. How are you doing in there? You making time with my girl? Hell, last time I saw him, it's like I go to go master my record, I come back, they're having damn dinner with wine and shit <laughs> like that. It's there. like, y'all having a date? Music Row is where this music is written, it's where this music is recorded, this is where it's published, this is where it's licensed, this is where it's marketed, this is where it's distributed, this is where the success of country music is determined and who those country stars are going to be. It all happens right here within, I don't know, three square blocks, right? But look around, country music, music from the country, what about this looks like the country? I mean, look at this. Does this look like the country to you? Nothing about what this is right here looks like, represents, or sounds like the country. So it's a joke. It's a big myth. It's a lie. They've created this infrastructure to spread the money around because they realized back in the 1950s with the success of Hank Williams that, hey, there's a lot of money to be made off this. We can get rich off this. You spread the money around through publishing houses, licensing, recording, management, booking, all that stuff happens right here within this area. Look at these offices and you'll notice a lot of them are for lease right now. Why? Because all this, these are all dinosaurs. This is all something from the past. This is all going to change. All this is going to be wiped out because artists, you know, the new face of, of music, I think we don't need this. You know, we're smarter. We're smarter than these people. And you look at the people coming out of these offices, they don't look like folks from the country, you know? Country folks make country music, right? These aren't country folks. You know, I mean, look at these guys, you know? Those aren't hillbillies. You know, they, they think that Hank Williams is just some, you know, old hillbilly music. You ready? You can always hear that train whistle around Tennessee. Well, I'm definitely blackballed from Nashville or the black sheep of the Bible Belt because I don't go down on Music Row and write my songs in the office and play the game and pitch them. I write songs for myself, and um, that's, that's going against the grain. I kind of had everything reversed on me when I had a... Uh, a one night stand that waited like about two and a half years to tell me I had a kid and a judge.